Well, good afternoon, everyone. If you are on the line, um, you're here for our webcast today to talk about the viaduct closure and uh, plans for navigating the area and the region during the closure, as well as a brief overview of Kitsap Transit's new double map mobile app. Um, if you are uh, one of the panelists, uh, please uh, uh, please make sure your, your, your speakerphone is on mute uh, at this moment. And I'm just going to go through a couple of uh, housekeeping items as people are dialing in or tuning in. Um, after the webinar today, you will receive a short survey. And please tell us. Uh, in the survey what you thought of your webinar experience. Before we begin, somewhere on the screen you should see your GoToWebinar controls. If you cannot see your control panel, it could be another application is in front of it. Look for the blue flower GoToWebinar icon on your computer and click on it to bring up the controls. During the webinar, if you have a question, you can simply type it into the question pane and hit send, and your question will be sent directly to us. Now, so far, there are at least 40 people who are on this webinar today, and just the three of us. So if we can't answer your question during the Q&A portion of the webinar, we'll try to respond to you uh, later. Uh, this webinar is being recorded so that it'll be available uh, later for folks who were not able to join today. and with those notes, um, I'd like to start by introducing our panelists today. Um, my name is Sanjay Bhatt. I'm the Public Information Officer for Kitsap Transit. And our panelists. Hi, I'm Brock Fender. I'm the Major Construction Communications Manager for WashDOT's Ferries Division. Hi, I'm Kimberly Ruiz, Operations Coordinator with Kitsap Transit. Wonderful. All right. So our agenda today is uh, to have an overview of the viaduct closure. Uh, then we'll talk a bit about the Coleman Dock area. We've gotten a lot of questions uh, about that. Uh, then we'll walk you through a website that Kitsap Transit and Washington State Ferries partnered on for Kitsap uh, commuters who are going to be going into Seattle during this period. And then we'll have a quick tutorial on using the Double Map mobile app. Um, and then some Q&A. Brock, go ahead. Hi, everyone. This is Brock. So what I'd like to do is provide a brief overview of the State Route 99 viaduct closure. The closure happens from roughly Western Avenue to Spokane Street over by the West Seattle Bridge. It's in both directions, northbound and southbound. However, the Battery Street Tunnel remains open. So if you know where those ramps are by Bell Street and Western on and off of the Battery Street Tunnel, northbound and southbound, you can still use those routes. So Viaduct will be closed for three weeks. In addition, the connecting ramps at the north and south ends of the Viaduct also will be closed for an additional two or three weeks on top of that. The reason for the closure is so that construction crews can hook up the entrance and exits to the terminal, actually realigning the ramps so that the entrance and the exit on both sides are in line with the tunnel. That's the, the basic gist of it. 90,000 vehicles use the SR99 viaduct every day, and those vehicles need to either find another route, or what we're hoping is that folks will sh shift the way that they use transportation and perhaps use public transportation instead of using their car during the viaduct closure so that we can help keep the streets clear for people who don't have that option. So some folks are just physically unable to take public transportation and we wanna make sure the roads are clear for them.
that's the summary. Does anybody have any questions? Well, and before we take those uh, questions about that, I'd like to just, uh, out of curiosity, uh, do a poll here. Uh, if you are looking at your screen, there is a poll open. Um, how likely are you to drive into Seattle during the viaduct closure? And I want to ask everyone who is listening or attending online to uh, select uh, one of the options, highly likely, somewhat likely, unlikely, or not applicable. And I will uh, close up the poll here momentarily. Um, and obviously, if, if you if your mode is different depending on the day of the week, I guess pick the one that's the most uh, most frequent for you. All right, I'm going to close up the poll here and share the results. Three, two, one, close. And let's share the results of the poll with the audience. So it looks like close to, what is that, 40? More than 40% of you are highly likely to drive into Seattle, and about 38% are unlikely to drive into Seattle. Thanks for that. So um, we can take some questions about the, the viaduct closure. Um, and one of the questions is, will there be additional public transportation provided during this closure? That's a Actually, a question we're going to get into in in, in some uh, in some detail later. But uh, Brock, do you have any anything you want to say on that? So we do know that on the Seattle side, there will be additional sailings on the King County Water Taxi, and Seattle Metro also has some buses in reserve to fill in as needed. So that's what we know so far. So not every route will have additional service, but some will. There is no additional service on Washington State Ferries. And Kitsap Transit will not be adding additional buses, but we certainly do have capacity to accommodate. OK, one of the questions that's coming in is about uh, how will auto traffic enter and exit Coleman Dock, and another about the pedestrian bridge. So Brock, let's move on to the next slide. Um, about navigating around the Seattle Ferry Terminal. Right. So the Seattle Ferry Terminal at Coleman Dock remains completely open during the three-week viaduct closure. There are no changes to access for any of the modes. So that means if you are driving on, the entrance remains at South Jackson Street, with the exits being at Gessler and Marion. If you're walking, the the Marion Street pedestrian bridge remains completely open throughout the viaduct closure, as well as the main entrance on Alaskan Way. So there's no change whatsoever. What we will say is that if you are planning to drive, and it seems like some of you are still planning to drive, just remember to add lots of time to get to and from Coleman Dock. Because of construction, we have a much smaller area to hold vehicles waiting for the ferry, and we'll be using our v overflow vehicle holding uh, just south of the dock on a neighboring pier at Pier 48. And what that means is that once we start loading the vessel, we're going to then move the cars from the overflow vehicle holding directly through the toll plaza onto the vessel. You're going to want to make sure that you are in line in that overflow vehicle holding area at least 30 minutes before the scheduled sailing. So some things that, some tips that I have is when you're planning your route, let's say you're coming in in the morning and you're driving into Coleman Dock, check Google Maps or Waze and kind of get an estimate for how long it'll take you and then add a half an hour just to get through the traffic. And when you're coming back, you can do the same thing. Look on Google Maps, Waze, add a half an hour, it's also helpful to check vessel watch to see exactly what the timing is of your vessel. One of the main concerns we have, we've heard from drivers, is uh, making sure that the, the offloading vehicles from arriving sailings are offloaded off the dock in time and into the, the, the city of Seattle. 
uh, because as you know, you can't load a ferry unless there is an empty ferry. So you have to unload the ferry in order to load the ferry for the next sailing. So we are working with the Seattle Department of Transportation to help manage the traffic lights to keep traffic moving. However, if there is gridlock in the city of Seattle, there is a chance that even with those that method, that w there could be delays getting off the dock, and that could mean delays for your sailing. So it's very important that you keep a keep a look on Vessel Watch, and work with us where you can. Um, and if it's at all possible to shift your mode of transportation, even if it's just for a couple days a week, to walk on instead of drive on, that also will help the process. That's great. Um, there's also been a question about, uh, is there any recommended route to get from the Seattle Ferry Terminal to I-90 or I-5 if you're driving? So there's no specific recommended route or and there are no detours outlined during the viaduct closure. Um, what I can tell you is that Alaskan Way and First, Second, Third, Fourth Avenue, the avenues, those are going to be the main thoroughfares for north-south traffic. Uh, if you are coming from Coleman Dock and you need to get to I-90, my suggestion would be just to get on Alaskan Way heading southbound to First Avenue and then turn left onto Royal Brome over to I-90 at that point. But there is no specific recommended route. When you go onto our website, which we'll, we'll walk you through in a second, there is a link to um, Wash Dots and S Dots real-time traffic page. And from there, you can get a sense of where the busy streets are to make help inform your decision. And that information is also available through Google Maps and through Waze. So that's another great opportunity for folks to use, use the um, wayfinding apps to determine the best route. One other question that's come up that uh, touches on this and the previous slide, Brock, is uh, when will the actual viaduct come down and disrupt the ability to cross from the ferry terminal to I-5? Do you want me to advance to the next slide? Um, the next slide is the, is the uh, next slide show? the walking oh, pedestrian oh. bridge for this summer. No, that that I don't think that that's the question. As I understand it, is the viaduct demolition when that happens? How will that affect people who are walking and driving to Coleman Dock? Is that essentially right? Yeah, I think that's right. Thank you. Okay, so the viaduct demolition in front. The viaduct is about a mile and a half long, and so it's going to take them a long time to bring the viaduct down. They're bringing it down, they're demolishing it in two block sections at a time. When they demolish the viaduct over an intersection, they will close the intersection below and offer a detour. So that's no different when uh, the viaduct is demolished in front of Coleman Dock. So for example, when the viaduct is demolished over the, that part that spans the Marion Street pedestrian bridge, we will close the Marion Street pedestrian bridge and uh, allow for a detour during that time. And it could be closed for up to two weeks. The same with when they're demolishing the viaduct over Yesler Way and Marion Street. So the approximate schedule, we're still figuring that out. From what I understand, it look, looks like it could be anywhere between mid to late February and April. I also understand that there is a moratorium on demolition um, between Yesler Way and Pike Street during the summer months, and that's because the waterfront is already pretty busy, and we don't want to disrupt that anymore. And that's what I know about demolition. It's a good idea, if you aren't signed up already, to go on to in the Coleman Dock Project website and sign up for email updates because we will provide that information through email updates, as well as rider alerts if you already subscribe to Washington State Ferry rider alerts for your route. This next slide here that Sunday has put up, now this is when the Marion Street Bridge actually changes, and this is in summer 2019. In summer 2019, you can see uh, that we move into that first section of the new terminal building. So today, that orange hashed mark section above you can kind of see right there, that right in the middle of your screen. That's the current ferry terminal building. Starting in midsummer or late summer 2019, 
we're actually going to close that building so we can demolish it and move all of the operations into that gray square below it. And that's the first section of the new terminal building. When we do that, we also have to redirect the Marion Street pedestrian bridge so that it no longer connects to the terminal that we're actually going to be demolishing. So you can see on the right side of the screen, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but uh, Marion Street Bridge starts between first Ave starts at First Avenue and Marion. It'll continue to Western, and then it jogs left to Columbia, and then over to the new terminal building. And this is expected to open when we move folks into the new building, so not until summer 2019. Brock, one of the questions that's been submitted is when will the tunnel actually be used by the public? I guess the question is when will the tunnel be available and open? My understanding at this point is the tunnel is scheduled to open to the public um, for traffic on Monday, February 4th. There is a big celebration event at the tunnel on Saturday, February 2nd and Sunday, February 3rd. So my understanding is that it opens pretty soon after that. Great. Um, okay, should we move on to the uh, web page? Anything else you want to say? No, I, I, I think I, I answered the questions, but I'm, I'm always happy to return and, and answer more questions later in the broadcast. Great. Um, so. I'd like to show you all the web page that uh, Kitsap Transit and Washington State Ferries partnered to create as sort of a resource for Kitsap County residents who are uh, traveling into Seattle during the viaduct closure. Um, give me a second to bring that up. Okay, so uh, the URL again is kitsaptransit.com slash realign99, which will bring up this page. And um, at the beginning, there's just sort of a, the idea here is that we all have choices we can make. Uh, certainly we can drive our car onto a state ferry and uh, drive through Seattle. But um, it's going to be very challenging once the viaduct closes to move through traffic in Seattle. and we can all do our part to help reduce the, the Seattle squeeze, as they're calling it. Um, choices include working from home, traveling during off-peak periods, riding a bus to the ferry terminal from your neighborhood or a park and ride lot, having a friend give you a ride to a ferry terminal, uh, and then once you're on the Seattle side, taking a, a bus or a train uh, using a ride share or a bike share. And uh, there's always the option of a van pool or a car pool. So what we've tried to do here is uh, give folks, especially those of you who drive normally and are not familiar with transit, uh, an easily digestible way to find what option might work best for you. So if you are on the Kitsap side, we have put together here a list of um, different kinds of modes. And you might use more than one. But if you live in an area where you don't have a bus stop right on your street, Perhaps you could uh, use a park and ride, and you click on that playing card, and it'll take you to this table, which will show you the ferry terminal that you might need to depart from, and then underneath that terminal, which park and rides we have that um, a bus will transport you from that park and ride and drop you off right at that ferry terminal. So if you need the address for any of these park and rides, you just click right here, and it'll take you to a page with all the details about the park and rides that Kitsap Transit offers. Below that is a table with all the buses that serve each of the four ferry terminals in Kitsap County. And so if you now drive onto the ferry at Bainbridge, um, this is a list of all the buses that will drop you off there. If you drive onto the ferry in Bremerton, this is the list of buses that will uh, drop you off at our Bremerton terminal. Um, if you live in Silverdale or Polsbo and um, haven't really tried our transit services before, I also encourage you to consider our new um, 302, 307 buses and our Kingston Ride Fast Ferry commuter, 
which will drop you off at the Kingston Terminal, where you can ride our new fast ferry to downtown Seattle. And um, so that is uh, that part. And then we've got some resources here if you are uh, riding a van pool, as well as uh, links to the ferry schedules right here. Um, and then once you're on the Seattle side, there's options here for you. And someone had brought up a question about what about bicyclists? Um, so we have some resources here for bicyclists and for pedestrians on navigating the area. And um, um, also for motorcyclists. And, uh, and then some links here to King County Metro and WashDOT and SDOT as well. So uh, without belaboring it, I just wanted to make sure that um, everyone's aware that we have this uh, resource here to uh, get some information. Also, I want to point out there is a free Seattle waterfront shuttle. It's a hop-on, hop-off van uh, that operates as far south as King Street Sa Station in Pioneer Square and as far north as the Space Needle. And it does make stops along the Alaskan Way waterfront, including at uh, Pier 52. So uh, with that, I will are there any questions about that? Um, where will taxis pick up in front of the terminal? Brock, do you want to answer that? Sure. So there's no change to the current configuration. So taxis will be, and taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts will continue to use that load and unload area, the loading zone area in front of the terminal, and they'll continue to have the, there's a several parking spaces available for them underneath the viaduct across the street from the terminal. Great. Um, another question that came in is, as a current van pool driver, it would be helpful to have a toll booth at the ferry that is dedicated for van pools and similar priority vehicles so we don't get stuck waiting when Coleman Dock is full of cars. Can you address that, Brock? So we don't have, uh, by law, we, we, we can't have an express lane at our toll plaza just for van pools or car pools. However, we do prioritize van pools and car pools at our uh, Tier 48 entrance. So when you enter the Seattle Ferry Terminal at South Jackson Street, if you're in a van pool or a carpool, you can skip the line of vehicles waiting in the vehicle holding area and go directly to the driveway, which will take you to the toll plaza. Once you're through the toll plaza, we do have a dedicated lane on most sailings. We can't guarantee it. However, we, we most of the time we can offer a dedicated priority lane so that you will absolutely make the ferry. That's what we have on the Seattle side. And on the west side, it's a similar situation. There are no express toll plazas for carpools or van pools. However, we do our best to separate out carpools and van pools and give them priority access on most sailings. Um, Brock, I don't know if you want to address this now, but one question is, uh, someone had asked earlier about taxis and the loading zones. What will happen to those loading zones when the viaduct is being demolished at Madison and Marion? So the loading zones stay the same during the viaduct demolition because they're on the opposite side of the street. The only thing that changes during the viaduct demolition is when they are demolishing the section of viaduct over the intersection. So for example, when they're demolishing that section over Madison Street, there will be a detour in place so that people can drive around it. But the uh, loading zone across the street will remain open. But the loading zone will remain open during that demolition because it's across the street. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's go back here now. Um, we'll come back to some of these questions. For those of you who are um, not currently uh, using uh, transit on the Kitsap side, I wanted to flash up a Another poll here, um, if you'll indulge me. Um, so 
I'm just kind of curious for those of you who who commute or 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 otherwise use transit, uh, if you're interested at all in real time bus and ferry information. And I'll I know several people in Seattle who use the One Bus Away mobile app. Um, I myself use uh, that app when I'm in Seattle. And uh, Google Maps is also wonderful. I will close this poll up here momentarily. Three, two, one. And it looks like 90% of you are uh, interested in real-time bus and ferry information. And, and Brock has already uh, mentioned the uh, vessel watch, which is really great. Um, we want to talk briefly here about uh, Double Map, which is a new, uh, relatively new mobile app that Kitsap Transit has uh, deployed uh, for our uh, customers to use. And Kimberly, who's been uh, patiently waiting on the line, is going to talk about that. Kimberly? Oh, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, we recently, um, in the last year, have deployed the Double Map system and just in the last month have actively updated all our equipment to include our fast ferries and uh, local foot ferries uh, to show on the Double Map app. Um, you can get it from the uh, Apple Store or from Google Play, uh, free download for your device, or we have a desktop version, and it, it is at kitsap.doublemap.com. They'll allow you to same access only on your desktop. Uh, it, it starts out, you would select the system. There are other systems. Um, that use it so you would go down and select uh, the Kitsap Transit and once you open the system it will display a map uh, in the upper left hand corner there's a menu you would activate by hitting the three short lines uh, under there you'll find a section marked announcement that will um, also allow you to connect um, and sign up for rider alerts for our system uh, gives you a little bit information about uh, our abbreviations that we use. Uh, if you're not familiar with our transfer and, centers, and we'll be showing that in a in a video here, a short video here soon. Uh, what this does is it allows you uh, under the menu. If you go in under the routes, it allows you to toggle on or off the specific service you would like to see. So um, really customizes. Uh, there so you're not having to look at everything. Uh, if you select the route uh, from the route selection screen, which is the, the one on the far left on your screen, uh, they do have a new feature added there. Uh, it looks like a little calendar icon that will actually take you to our Kitsap Transit website for that specific route so you can see the actual full schedule because this is, um, again, real-time information, not uh, like a trip planner. So if you wanted to know something later in the day, that would be a fast way to connect and, and with our schedules and be able to obtain that information. Um, other features that you can do is if you use a specific stop, you can set that stop as a favorite and then it would show up in the main menu and you could go right to it or allow you to jump to it. Um, you can see where the stops are on any one of our routes uh, just by uh, click, either clicking on the bus or you can zoom in uh, on your screen and the little black dots that start showing up, those are our stops. You click on the stop, it'll tell you which bus is going to service that stop and the estimated arrival time. Great. Um before we kind of go into the double map video, I'm just kind of um, kind of curious. Uh, I'm going to launch another poll here. Um, how often do you plan on driving alone from Kitsap to Seattle during the viaduct closure?
And I'll give you a few minutes, a few seconds to uh, select an option there. And I'm going to close it up here momentarily. Uh, how often do you plan on driving alone from Kitsap through Seattle during the closure? OK, so it looks like a lot of you don't plan to drive very often into Seattle during the closure. And some of you say never. So I don't know. Uh, uh, if uh, perhaps maybe some of you will consider using the double map app and ride transit to the ferry terminal. That's uh, so now I'm just going to, if you'll indulge me, I'm just going to play a very short uh, video um, here. And um, please feel free to submit some questions about the, about the, uh, viaduct or about double map while the video is playing. And as soon as the video is done, we will uh, take some more questions. In your web browser, type kitsapdoublemap.com. By default, Double Map will show you a map with all routes shown and links to download its mobile apps for iPhone and Android. To see the full map, click the X and use the zoom buttons in the lower right corner, or click and drag on the hand on the screen to move around the map. You'll see pointers with numbers moving on the screen. The numbers correspond to our bus routes. In the left navigation panel under routes, you will see the full list of routes, a link to each route's schedule, and a toggle switch. If you're interested in only a few routes, you can click show none to hide all the routes on the map and then use the toggle switch on the right side of the screen to turn on only those routes you want to track. You'll notice there are sometimes routes listed twice in the list. That is because Double Map will show both inbound and outbound routes, and routes that vary during the day in their stops. The left navigation panel also has a section called Announcements. Click on it to expand it. At the bottom is a key with abbreviations that are used on the map. For example, BTC stands for Bremerton Transportation Center. If you would like to provide feedback on the app, click on the first link in this section. If you would like to be notified in the future of service changes on your route, click on the second link in this section. Now let's get back to the map. To zoom in or out on the map, click the plus or minus buttons in the lower right corner of the map. From the map, you can watch a bus move and see where it's headed along a given route. If you see your route highlighted but do not see a bus, there are several potential reasons for this. And the equipment on the bus may be malfunctioning, and there could be issues with the cellular network. With the map zoomed in, you will see stops appear as black dots. Click on a dot to bring up the stop detail, which shows the bus routes serving the stop, in what direction, such as southbound appears as SB, and how many minutes until the next bus is expected to arrive. Do keep in mind, again, that this estimated time is Double Map's best estimate based on the last known location of the bus. The bus transmits its location every three seconds. However, if any of the previously mentioned issues causes the bus's location not to be transmitted, Double Map will show the time of arrival based on the schedule, not based on real-time location. 
For this reason, Kitsap Transit encourages riders to be at their stop five minutes before a scheduled departure. To close the stop detail, click the X. And that is a quick tour of Double Map for the web. Thank you for watching this video. Okay, we're back and uh, taking some more questions. So uh, let's see. Are there additional questions? Brock and Kim, you're on the line? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, so uh, yeah. a question that came in on Double Map, uh, Kim, uh, does is there a plan to add any other commuter ferries, not just a foot and fast ferries, to the Double Map app? And I'm, I'm not sure if they're asking about WSF or, or water taxi. I'm not sure, but do you want to speak to that? Yeah, um, yes. We are only adding uh, Kitsap Transit operated vehicles onto the software. OK. Um, someone was asking, why is the uh, Route number one not showing um, in in Double Map, and I I don't know if they were speaking about the video or or they logged on. But do you want to speak to that question? Well, uh, if it's during the time that it should be running, it's possible that uh, the bus was not connected uh, this morning, or I'm, I'm not sure which time it would be, but it would be good for you to send in um, a comment on that so that we could go back and research it. Uh, I know that, that it's in there and has been showing, so I'm not, I would need specifics so I can track it down. And if the, if the bus is not running at the time that you're looking, it's not going to show up, right? That's correct. And the other thing that I I'm, I'm want to make sure everybody knows when they use uh, Double Map, when you first launch the app, and on your phone and you select to save the uh, whichever routes you want to see the next time you go in and open up your phone if other service is working it's not going to be selected so it will save your last selection but when you launch the app it's going to give you an option of any service that is operating when you launch the app I hope that's clear. OK. Um, a question for Brock. Um, do you know if Seattle Metro is planning to restore bus service from in front of Coleman Dock Terminal? I do not know of plans for Seattle Metro to restore bus service in front of the Coleman Dock Terminal. Um, I know that after the viaduct comes down, the Seattle waterfront is, is going to be under construction once again because they'll be building that whole new waterfront park and, and um, byways there. So once that's complete, I think that that is complete either in 2022 or 23, I'm not exactly sure. Um, then it's possible more bus routes could come in. A great website to check out is waterfront, I think it's waterfront.org. Um, let me just look this up. I'll look it up and I'll get back to you. OK. Um, another question, uh, the unloading lines driving off Bainbridge Ferry are terrible. Is it possible to make the right lane a left turn option instead of right turn straight only? Um, when will the offloading of traffic improve? Can you repeat that question? I was looking at the getting the seattlewaterfront.org confirming that website that the seattlewaterfront.org website will have more information about a uh, bus service and changes coming to the waterfront uh, sure. what was the other question sanjay uh the, the question that they submitted was uh it was more of a comment i guess the unloading lines driving off bainbridge ferry are terrible is it possible to make the right lane a left turn option instead of right turn straight only it seems like there's a concern that the offloading off the ferries uh, is 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 not good right now. Is this in reference to the Yesler Way exit? 
if it is, then uh, vehicles are permitted to go forward or turn right or left at that point. So the configuration that it's in today is not going to be changing. Uh, the reason why is because we are we are under construction, so we are, we are we are rebuilding the entire Coleman Dock and Seattle Ferry Terminal. Um, right now, it what we're doing is we're making it more seismically sound. A lot of the the trestle right now is made of wood, and we're replacing it with a concrete and steel trestle as well as new buildings. We're doing all of this complex work while we remain open with no changes to ferry service. So the same number of boats in and out every day. Uh, part of that requires us to make as much use of the available space on the dock as possible to hold vehicles. So we're maximizing the amount of space we use to hold vehicles. And that still allows us to have a couple lanes for exiting at both Gessler and Marion, but there's really not much more we can do at this point. So this person who asked the question said, yes, at Yesler, left turn is only left, so cars are jockeying to turn left. Viaduct closure will only make this worse. Yeah, so what I can tell you is that we're keeping an eye on that traffic light, and we're going to do our best to keep traffic moving off of the dock and working with the Seattle Department of Transportation, because they control the amount of green time at the traffic lights at both of our exits at Gessler and Marion. In terms of changing the configuration of the lanes, I, I know that there are no plans currently to do so. Another question coming in about, on the morning sailings, how much earlier do you recommend cars arrive at the Bremerton and Bainbridge terminals to catch a scheduled sailing into Seattle? That's kind of a tough one. At this point, yeah, I mean, I would say keep keep a look on Vessel Watch. It's not going to be as much of a problem on the west side, so at the Bainbridge and Bremerton terminal. However, if we do see delays uh, at the Seattle side, that could affect the arrivals and departures on the west side. So I would consider looking at Vessel Watch and adding – what we're saying now is to uh, plan to arrive 30 minutes before the scheduled sailing. That's the best I can, I can offer. What I can tell you is that this time of year is when we typically see the least amount of car volumes on our ferries, and we're also encouraging people not to drive because once they get into Seattle, it's going to be very crowded on the streets. So in terms of how much earlier to arrive at the Bainbridge and Bemerton side, I'm not sure that that will be an issue. The main thing is to check to see if your ferry is, is on time. And I, I would also add to that, that that WatchDot has a mobile app where you can look at how many spots are available on the, the boat, right? Yeah, yes. However, those, that app only records the number of cars that have gone through the toll plaza. So it doesn't count all of the cars waiting, and that's why we ask people to arrive at least 30 minutes before the scheduled sailing so that you can get in line on the dock, especially if you're coming from the Seattle side, so you can get in line in the overflow parking or the overflow vehicle holding at Pier 48, and this way you're more likely to be included in the load that, that goes on the ferry. But that app only, it tells you how many spaces are available, but it only counts the cars that have gone through the toll plaza, not the cars that are waiting to go through the toll plaza. Brock, sorry to keep hitting you with questions, but a lot more questions. So there are many blind individuals that use the ferry system to get to downtown Seattle. They then walk to 3rd and Marion using the pedestrian bridge. Will there be people available available to help them around the detours when the viaduct comes down at Marion and the new walkway on Columbia? So this is an area that I am less familiar with. Um, however, I am gathering questions and I appreciate your feedback. Um, I'm, I know that we will have accommodations for people with physical disabilities and for blind people. However, I'm not sure exactly what those will be. Uh, the best thing I can tell you is to continue to check our website, and if you are subscribed to the Coleman Dock Project email update, the information also will be shared there. Um, but at this time, I don't know specifics. Okay. All right. Um, 
let's see what do I, what else do we have here um, there is a question about um, There is a question earlier um, about, is there any specific guidance for bicyclists who are um, going onto the ferries and exiting at Coleman Dock? Uh, anything changing that they need to know about? There are no access changes for bicyclists. The best advice I can give you is to have an ORCA card because we do have dedicated ORCA bicycle entrances with an ORCA scanner, ORCA card scanner on the north side and the south side of the toll plaza. And what that's going to do is if you are heading to Bremerton, you can go right on that right side on the north side, scan your ORCA card, and then drive or ride right into the bicycle lane. And the same with Bainbridge, you can go all the way over to the south side, scan your ORCA card, and then just ride straight into the bike lane without any conflicts with vehicles. If you have a multi-pass or if you're not paying with ORCA, then you would need to use the toll plaza as normal. But the north and south bicycle entrance for ORCA cards will remain open throughout the closure. No changes. And while we're on the topic of uh, some of the incentives that we have to encourage people to ride transit uh, and not drive a car alone onto a ferry, um, Kitsap Transit is offering an incentive uh, for van pools the first month will be free for new Vanpool groups or riders that join existing groups. Uh, Kitsap Transit also pays for one empty seat in new Vanpools for up to six months and covers the driver abstract fee for new Vanpool drivers on the Bremerton Bainbridge uh, to Seattle ferry runs. Also, I should add that if uh, you do decide to use one of our park and ride lots to ride a KT bus, uh, your parking there is free all day. and. Uh, we coordinate our bus schedules to match up with the uh, Washington State Ferries. So um, that's another thing that we offer. So let's see. What other questions have come in? Um, Brock, a question about the Bainbridge Ferry Terminal. Um, I think. How are holding areas changing for Bainbridge sailings? Oh, from Seattle side during this three week phase? There, there's no change to the schedule during the viaduct closure or the viaduct demolition. So it is possible we're working to we're working to prevent delays. However, it is possible that the boats could go off schedule during the viaduct closure just due to the heavy volume of traffic exiting and entering on the ferry. So the best thing to do is to or plan to arrive 30 minutes before your scheduled sailing and use vessel watch to track where your sailing is and whether or not it's on time. I think but the question no was to the schedule. There's a question about are the holding areas changing, the physical holding areas during the three week closure? No. No, there are no changes to the holding areas at all, no changes to the entrance at South Jackson Street. There's no change to the holding areas at any of our terminals during the viaduct closure. Okay, so they're still accessing via South J Jackson. Correct, yes. Yes, okay. All right. Um, trying to keep up with your questions, folks. Thanks for your patience. Um, someone said, I'm exploring your double map app and I'm wondering what select system to choose. Kim, do you want to briefly speak to that? Yes, under select system it is in alphabetical order. You should be able to scroll down and select Kitsap Transit. Okay. And uh, it should save that preference, right? Yes, once you've selected that as your um, system, it will save that until you go and change it. A question, Brock, about the free waterfront shuttle. Where is the bus stop closest to the ferry terminal for the free waterfront shuttle northbound on Alaskan Way, and will this be affected by the viaduct closure or demolition? So the, the shuttle stops are roughly Alaskan Way and Marion Street. 
right in front of the Seattle terminal. So it's actually between the Seattle ferry terminal and the fast ferry passenger only ferry terminal that's currently out there right now. Um, and the operating hours are from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. on weekends. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so you said the shuttle stop is roughly at Alaskan Way in Marion? Yes. Okay. And if you go on to, there's a link to that hop on, hop off waterfront shuttle bus on our website that Sanjay pointed, pointed us to earlier. And if you go on that link, it actually shows where all of the stops are. So the same person is saying that stop is southbound. Where's the northbound stop? Hmm. My, I, I'm not sure. I thought that they were both at that location. So my suggestion would be to go on that website and and um, check look it out. To see where that stop is. Yeah. 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 I would do okay. that. And you know that website also has a real time tracker of all three of those vans, so you can see how far away it is too. So I'm sure several folks in Kitsap uh, use transit to uh, get to the web, uh, get to the airport. Someone is saying here, I have to get to the airport once a week. Link is often not an option for my particular trips. Do I understand you to be saying that using Google Maps or WAS are my best options for figuring out the best way to get to and from the airport on any given day? Well, um, any any of the panelists want to take that one? So the question is how to get to the airport from Kitsap? I think probably from the Seattle Ferry Terminal. Um, you know, obviously from okay. the Kitsap side, uh, they can use the Double Map app to see where their bus is that's going to get them to the uh, ferry terminal. Then they can hop on a ferry. Uh, to the Seattle Ferry Terminal. Um, I don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, there is the Link Light Rail goes right to SeaTac, goes right to the airport. So that's one option. And that link, you can pick up the Link Light Rail on Third Avenue. So it is a short walk from the Seattle Ferry Terminal. Um, this this person is saying Link is often not an option for my particular trips. I don't know if they're uh, why that is, but is there any other option besides Link? The other options to get to and from the airport is to use, there's airport shuttles that stop at some of the downtown hotels. The best advice I can provide is to go to the Port of Seattle website and click on the options for to get to, to, get to and from SeaTac Airport, but I know that there are other options that, uh, aside from Link, I'm not sure that they're public options, However, there are other options. And also, I would note that on our uh, Realign 99 page on Kitsap Transit, we have links to Lyft and Uber, uh, which are offering some discounts during the uh, closure. So um, just another option. We're fast approaching the end of our time uh, for this webinar. Um, I someone has brought up a question that I'm not sure we've 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 received so far. Um, how will people be able to access the cruise, the Alaska cruise ships, maybe that dock north of downtown? If I understand the question correctly. So there's no closures on Alaskan Way. Alaskan Way remains completely open. So that's how people access that cruise terminal today is they find their way to Alaskan Way and go from there. So all of the downtown streets will be open during the closure as well as during the demolition. Right. Um, I would like to flash up on the screen a poll question now. Um, will you download the Double Map mobile app today? Just feel free to answer that poll for us. And um, several of you have uh, asked some really great questions. 
today, and that will help us certainly in uh, our future uh, communications with the public, so we appreciate that. And I'm going to close the poll up here shortly, um, so please fill it out. Uh, tell us your answer here. And I'm going to close it now, three, two, one. And thank you. It looks like about 70% of you will download it today and give it a spin, and 10% uh, of you already have it on your device. So that's great. Thank you very much. Um, and so with that, we've got, um, we're, we're approaching the end of our time here. Are there any final questions from the audience that we have not addressed already? Uh, Brock and Kim, are there any any last parting words you want to share with the audience based on uh, the discussion so far? No, I think we covered a, a great deal of information. I just want to thank everybody for taking the time over your lunch break to join us. Thank you. Kim, any, any final words? Um, no, other than I, I really hope that you try out uh, the Double Map app and make sure and give us your feedback um, and let us know how you like it. Or if you run into anything, we're more than happy to uh, assist you. Thank you. So just let us know. And um, during the closure, if you have um, additional additional questions or uh, thoughts you want to share, um, you know, at our realign 99 webpage um, there's a link here at the bottom uh, to contact us so here's the Kitsap Transit uh, email address and phone number for questions about uh, transportation here in Kitsap County you can also reach out on Twitter um, it's twitter.com slash Kitsap Transit and Washington State Ferries contact information is here as well and they are also on Twitter um, and we will be uh, using the hashtag Realign99. Uh, so that's a great uh, hashtag to include if you're on Twitter. And thanks again, everyone. It's been a productive webinar, I think. And um, thanks for joining us. A recording of this webinar will be posted later uh, with closed captioning. So thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.